was recently at a department store that I'm going to call Lacey's. <laughs> and I promise I'm going to bring this back to caregiving and healthcare very shortly. But I believe that the story about Lacey's is going to resonate for a lot of you. Now, I went into Lacey's after work one evening and needed to buy some clothing for work, dresses and pants and maybe some jackets. I do this a couple times a year. And I went into Lacey's maybe 6 o'clock in the evening. I had already done a lot of recon online about what I was looking for, which a lot of us do nowadays. But I walked in to Lacey's on a scale of 0 to 100. I would put my stress level eh, maybe at a 30. I had a really long, busy day at work. I'd been driving a lot, which I don't really love. I had some stuff going on in my family that was on my mind, but overall, I wasn't too stressed out. I was at about a 30. So I'm in Lacey's and I start walking around and looking for the types of jackets and dresses and tops and clothing that I, I like. And I start picking up items on the hangers and I walk by the register area where there were two ladies chatting with one another and I didn't really pay much attention but uh, I noticed that they were there and I kept walking and I continued to gather up clothing and there's a lot of ladies here today I don't think men usually have quite the same issue but it starts to get heavy after a while you're starting to carry stuff around a department store so I finally decide it's time to go in I'm going in to the dressing room you know when you make that decision. I'm getting in there, I'm facing the, the mirror. So I go in to the dressing room and there's a lot of other women in the fitting room trying on outfits. It's a prime time for people to be trying on clothes after work, shopping. And I'm putting things on and things aren't going my way in the fitting room. I don't know if anybody here's ever had that experience, but wasn't going my way and I'm saying, oh, too much Chick-fil-A. I need to cut back on that drive through But I started thinking, all right, I need to get somebody to help me maybe get a different size in this outfit or this dress or this pair of pants. Well, suddenly, as if someone was reading my mind, I hear a voice come into the fitting room and it happened to be one of the ladies that was chatting at the register prior uh, that I'd passed before. And she says, ladies. And I think, oh, great. She's going to say, what do you, if you need anything else, if you need a different size. But no, she says, ladies, if you're not purchasing the items that you're trying on, we need you to hang them up on the rack that's outside the fitting room. So. Where do you think my stress level is now? Very close. I would put my stress level at a 70 now. Why? Why? What's the first thing to move me from a 30 to a 40? What's the first thing that happened? Yes. Actually, things not going my way in the fitting room is a little bit later on the notch. But that's part of it, yes. What's the first thing that moved me to a 40? Yeah. Well, having to carry all the heavy stuff. But before that, the ladies are chatting, not helping me. So I'm at a 30. I walk in. I'm in a decent mood, not too stressed. At a 40, I don't even realize it at the time. I walk by two ladies who are chit-chatting with one another, not helping other customers, but just chatting. And nobody says, hello, how are you? No one makes eye contact. And to your point, nobody says, can we carry that? Do you, do you want us to start a fitting room for you? None of that occurred. So I didn't really realize it at the time, but that was 40. And then the heaviness of the clothing of 50. I get into the fitting room. Things aren't going well. My fault. But I'm now still at a 60, even though it's my fault because of the Chick-fil-A. 
But now I'm finally at a 70 because now not only are those ladies who were chit-chatting at the register not asking me how they could help me, they're putting me to work. They're telling me I have to hang up clothes. I hate hanging up clothes in my own house. So the point I'm trying to make to you here is retail stores, restaurants, hotels, they're all about service and creating a customer-centric culture. Lacey's failed that day, but guess what? Who cares? Lacey's failed that day, but this is not that important. Now, it is to Lacey's, but to the rest of us, it's not life or death. It's not healthcare. The point I want to make to all of us in healthcare is when we mess up like Lacey's messed up, there are major consequences. Because when you've got a caregiver, let's say you work in a senior living community, and you have a caregiver that's worked all day, is he or she coming into the senior living community to, look, to visit their mother? Are they at a 30? If they worked all day, they're thinking about they have to uh, get paperwork for an appointment that their mother has to go to at the doctor's, that, that the medication's not been working, that their mother's been having behavioral issues. Are they at a 30 when they walk into the senior living community? Where are they, more likely? They might be at a 60, they might be at a 70, they might be higher. So, the little things. When your front desk attendant doesn't acknowledge them, doesn't make eye contact, that 70 is going to an 80 really quickly. When they get to their mother's apartment and can't find their mother and they find a staff person who says, oh, I don't know where she is, then it moves to a 90. I want everybody to remember, even if it doesn't seem like something's a big deal in your healthcare organization, your hospital, your senior living organization, it's usually gonna be a big deal to the caregiver. Who cares if I bought a dress or a jacket or a pair of pants at Lacey's that night? Stakes are really low. But you are not gaining a partner when we're missing those small things in working with a family caregiver. We wanna train the, fat, the staff that we all work with to understand that those little interactions can either make the caregiver feel like a partner or make the caregiver feel unimportant.